Hello Aurora lovers! I'm Dale Bone from Dale Bone Imaging and this is Aurora Hunting 101. Welcome to episode one. What are the Northern Lights or Aurora? The Northern Lights and Aurora are different names for the same thing. And the Aurora is a magical light that appears around the Earth's poles. You can be more specific by saying Aurora Borealis for the Northern Lights around the North Pole and Aurora Australis for the Southern Lights around the South Pole. Since I live in the Northern Hemisphere, I use the term Aurora and Northern Lights interchangeably. The, the Aurora in the North and Southern Hemispheres happen at the same time and behave in the same way. The Aurora are caused by charged particles flowing from the Sun through the Earth's magnetic field into the Earth's up, upper atmosphere. And they interact with oxygen and nitrogen in the thin upper atmosphere causing it to glow. And we see that glow and we call that the Aurora. We call this flow of particles from the sun the solar wind. And like winds on Earth, they can be stronger and weaker. When the solar winds are stronger, they blow more particles into the Earth's upper atmosphere. And that causes the aurora to expand and move further south. When they're weaker, the aurora contra contracts and moves further north and is less visible, and it's certainly less visible in more southern areas. This glowing oxygen and nitrogen gives the aurora its different colors. It is harder for us to see the colors with our eyes. Um, well, we may only see pale colors or black and white, while a camera will pick up much more color. Many photographs show them with greens at the bottom and sometimes red or magenta colors higher up. Uh, a few other colors are possible but are less common. And the glow is approximately 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface. A little above that, a little higher, than, or can be quite a bit higher than that, but it's far above the clouds. The aurora forms a ring around both poles. This is called the aurora ole, and it's shaped a bit like a lopsided donut. But it's huge, it's a huge donut. Uh, 90, it's 90 to 150 kilometers above the earth and can extend up to a thousand kilometers. Uh, north and south, so between the equator and the poles, it can extend for hundreds of kilometers and east-west it wraps all the way around the Earth. Here's a, here are a few examples. First, let's look at this picture. I took this picture in Saskatoon and I've edited it a little bit uh, to make it look as close as possible to what I could see. Now it's still maybe a little bit brighter than what I could see, but it's pretty close. So you can see that there's some pale greens in there. There's not a lot of color. Maybe a little hint of red in this pillar here. Now, this is not an ideal location, but often you don't have perfect locations. So this is taken inside in the city. It's a relatively dark place, but you can see the city lights on the snow and the benches. Um, the area across the river is fairly dark, it's a field that's not developed. Uh, there is some development further out, but it's relatively dark for a city location. The sky isn't particularly dark, but you know, this is approximately what you can expect to see, unless you get very lucky and the northern lights are significantly brighter than, you, uh, than normal, and sometimes they do brighten significantly. But this is what you should go out looking for. On the other hand, um, yeah, 
with a high-end camera, we can take long exposures of the aurora, get many more colors in there. But we still have this basic idea of greens and yellows lower on the horizon and magentas and reds uh, higher up. So this is basically the front face of that auroral oval, the donut that you would see. Next, I want to take a look at the aurora from above. I think it's much easier to understand what's going on when you see an aerial view of the aurora versus just trying to understand it from the ground or looking at pictures. So what we have here is the 30 minute forecast from NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center. This is the most accurate aurora forecast available. It updates every five minutes and it's based on incoming satellite data. And here, you, this is just a computer model. It's not the actual pictures, but you can see this oval shape or the donut shape of the aurora around the North Pole. It's even showing greenish areas in the daylight side. Obviously, you cannot see the aurora during the daylight. You're only going to be see it, being able to see it on the northern side or on the uh, dark side. So this is a single forecast. If uh, you go to their Space Enthusiasts uh, dashboard, you can see a time-lapse of the Aurora forecast. So if we go here and take a look. Here you can see the size of that donut, the oval expands and shrinks as the amount of particles and energy coming from the sun increases and get decreases. And you can also see how it rotates around the Earth. Obviously, the, it's the Earth that rotates, not the oval. But it'd be confusing if, you know, North America kept going around, I think. So they're just keeping the Earth stationary and showing how, showing how the oval changes as the, as the Earth revolves relative to the sun. And then finally, I want to take a quick look at this video. I'm going to cover it in more detail later. But this is one of my favorite videos. It was shot, uh, I believe, as a time lapse from the space station. And it travels across the Pacific, across the, the US, so we can see um, the North and Canada in this video. So you can see these pillars and the pulsating aurora, um, but there, there is a definite front edge there to the aurora. The uh, space station doesn't go in a straight line, it goes in a uh, wave around the Earth, so now it's traveling further south, further away from the aurora. If I go back a little bit, I wanna pick this spot So, again, to re reiterate about the scale, um, this is Western Canada. Uh, this area over here is Alberta with the cities of Calgary and Edmonton. Over here we have Saskatchewan and the smaller cities of Regina and Saskatoon. Winnipeg over here in Manitoba. A uh, little bit of BC here, I think Banff is over here. I think this is the oil fields down in North Dakota. Certainly this area down in here is in the northern U.S. So we're talking about a huge area, and you can see this wall of aurora, the front edge of that oval. Just to give you an idea of the scale of the aurora, I think sometimes when people first try, and go see, try to go to see the aurora and they can't see it, they think they're in the wrong place. But, you know, if you're in Regina and you drove to... Moose Jaw over here, about 70 kilometers away, uh, there would be no difference in the, what you'd see for the aurora. It's only if you went along hundreds of kilometers further north, then you start getting closer to that edge, and then your view would start to change. So unless you're willing to drive hundreds of kilometers, um, moving different locations is not gonna make a big difference. 
but and, th and then the colors in this are you know this the same thing red higher up and then greenish yellows for the down this isn't particularly saturated so this is closer to the you know naked eye what you see with your eyes but you know that's still more colorful than you would see In this episode, I've talked about how the aurora is caused by glowing gases in the Earth's upper atmosphere. It covers a large area and f forms a oval or donut shaped uh, region around both the North and South Poles. And it's created by particles flowing in from the sun's solar winds into the Earth's upper atmosphere. In the, in the next episode, I want to uh, expand on what sort of activities on the sun increases the auroral displays on Earth. So please check out episode two, What Causes the Aurora, and I'm wishing you clear skies and happy hunting.